Hello and welcome back dear friends at Lit E City YouTube channel and at present we are discussing some important linguistic terms in this series in our this tutorial we are going to discuss some very interesting and important terms related with linguistic and different branches of linguistic we will cover today term like diglossia deep and surface structure generative and prescriptive grammar linguistic competence and performance and hyper corrections so let's start our today's video with our first term that is diglossia now dear friends the term diglossia which is Greek, actually a Greek term uh, meaning in English speaking two languages. Easy to uh, we can say understand this term. Di means two and gloss means words or language. It was first used in uh, the present context in the social linguistic context by the linguist Charles Ferguson in 1959. Now, what is diglossia? Diglossia is a situation in which two distinct varieties of a language are spoken within the same speech community. Now, dear friends, it is about how two speaker, how one speaker uses two or more varieties of a particular language uh, in different social context. Now. In uh, between these two varieties, one variety which is also labeled as high variety or H variety, it is the prestige variety and used in public and formal occasions like when a person is in public media, in uh, institutes like schools, offices, in religious services where it demands a formal uh, religious service. This is called the prestige variety and the other one is known as low variety or L variety. It is used in intimate and domestic sphere. Now in a large and multicultural in, uh, country, especially uh, countries like India, Diglossia is a very commonly found linguistic feature not only in English or Indian uh, major Indian languages like Hindi and Southern languages like Tamil and Telugu but in almost all languages. There is a famous uh, saying uh, in India that uh, after every 7 or 10 kilometers the language changes. This is what uh, Diglossia means about. Here we must remember that it, bilingualism is different term. It refers to the ability of an individual of speaking two different languages. So bilingualism is the, we can say, the potential or the knowledge of more than one language and uh, it is used rarely in public contexts. While diglossia refers to a social, a social situation where two language varieties or dialects are used and the reason behind is uh, the context. When people are bi-dialectal, this is the third but related term, they use two dialects of the same language based on their surroundings or different contexts where they use one or the other language variety. In fact, it is almost diglossia, similar to diglossia, but it is uh, by, uh, by, by dialectalism is not about language, but it is rather about two dialects. Now, it is sometimes that their one language like Hindi, it has so many dialects that people while they are working and moving from one place to another, they also use two different dialects. And then we have bilingual diglossia. It is a type of diglossia in which one language variety is used specifically for writing while another is used specifically for speech. So it is a different kind of, uh, once again we can understand this is a formal one and this is an informal one. Fishman extended diglossia to apply situations where historically unrelated languages were used together 
वंस अगेन वन अ प्रेस्टीज लैंग्वेज एच एंड कलाकुअल वन फॉर लोअर वेराइटी generally we see that languages uh, which are found in diglossia they are very uh, similar to each other for example in middle east countries there are two uh, we can say standard uses of uh, arabic language similarly in german countries uh, we find high german and low german but according to fishman they are historical historically connected related to each other there are some situations in which two totally unrelated languages can acquire the same situation one of the prestige language and one of the local or communication language and what better example than in india uh, uh, where english is used in many formal situation it is considered to be uh, the preferred language in certain formal contexts like interviews and other things and the same speaker uses hindi in the informal surroundings here we can understand this concept with the, these three diagrams i don't know about this the speaker we assume is non native to english language and it is a formal situation maybe an interview or an office where the lady speaks in this particular language uh, but when you are in an informal situation you use हिंदी लैंग्वेज इसके बारे में मैं नहीं जानता स्टिल इट इज स्टैंडर्ड हिंदी इन इवन इन अ मोर यू कैन से इंटीमेट ग्रुप वेयर यू आर विद फ्रेंड्स और लोकल पीपल यू बेसिकली कम टू द डायलैक्ट्स ऑफ हिंदी फॉर एग्जांपल दिस इज राजस्थानी डायलैक्ट एंड देन यूपी डायलैक्ट ऑफ दी देयर आर सो मेनी डिफरेंट डायलैक्ट्स इन हिंदी सो यू कैन सी दैट अ पर्सन इज यूजिंग दिस लैंग्वेज अकॉर्डिंग टू वेरियस सोशल कॉन्टेक्स दिस इज वॉट डायग्लोसिया इज ऑल अबाउट ओके मूविंग टू अवर नेक्स्ट कॉन्सेप्ट दैट इज ऑफ deep structure and surface structure which are introduced by noam chomsky the very important influential linguist american linguist and he pre he presented these concepts as a part of his work on transformational grammar now dear friends deep structure in a very basic terms it refers to concepts thoughts ideas feelings and surface structure refers to the words language we used to represent the deep structure i hope you uh, understand you have heard about ferdinand de saussure's concept of lang and parole where lang is the reservoir lang is the social uh, collection the complete collection of vocab and parole is actually used similarly you can compare these terms deep structure is our knowledge our concepts thoughts ideas abstract we can say and surface structure is actually how we use our knowledge uh, in the daily communication so deep structure is what you wish to express and surface structure is how you express it now deep structure which is also known as the structure is in other words the underlying syntactic structure and now the surface st structures are derived from deep structure by a series of transformation it is that it is drawn from our subconscious and then changed into actual uh, utterances major grammatical relations subject and object lexical insertion they occur at deep structure and all transformation of these into utterances they occur after deep structure so this is what he means by transformation grammar the surface structure refers to the sentence as it is pronounced or written finally taken shape deep structure is thus the abstract structure and it allows the native speaker of a language to note what the sentence mean so on one side we have the speaker taking from deep structure certain words arranging them transforming them into utterances on the other end we have a listener when he listens or when he read a particular sentence with the help of deep 
a structure he or she makes meaning of it transformation functions as a link between deep structure and surface structure because uh, when it happens it actually uh, changes into something which could be easily understood for example surface structure visiting doctors can be nuisance now this is an utterance deep structure now there can be when we heard this particular sentence we can uh, interpret this particular sentence according to our deep structure in two meanings one is we visit doctors so here visiting becomes verb it can be nuisance now the second one in the second one we have doctors visit us so it becomes a participle so in first sentence visiting is mean verb while in second one it is a participle so this is how our deep structure knowledge help us to decipher the meaning of a sentence but one surface structure because it can be used to represent multiple deep structures and similarly the same deep structure can represent two different surface structure for example here i purchased a new mobile this is one surface structure a new mobile was purchased by me this is second surface structure they both mean they both have the same deep structure but they are two different surface structure so it is these both surface structure exactly mean the same thing their uh, syntax is different the focus is different the structure is different but their meaning is the same and that is why they have one deep structure now because sometimes one surface structure can be used to represent multiple deep structure as we have seen in our first example this causes structural ambiguity as the listener or reader through deep structure can interpret the sentence in more than one way so it is called structural ambiguity deep structure ambiguity depends on different interpretation of grammatical relation such as what is subject and what is the direct object here are a very good example the captain saw the pirate with telescope with the telescope now in the first uh, picture the captain saw the pirate the captain with the telescope here this is the complete subject uh, phrase and saw the pirate is the predicate so you can see now i understand this picture in this sense that telescope is with the captain however in the second picture we have the same picture the captain it is the subject part saw the pirate with the telescope so here it is captain only subject pirate with the telescope so now both meanings are applicable to the same surface structure which gave rise to two deep structures this is what structural ambiguity is called dear friends uh, we will cover ambiguity sometime later because it is a very interesting topic there are so many uh, types of ambiguities because of lexical or structural situation okay our next friend uh, next concept dear friends is generative and prescriptive grammar these two are terms which are co in contrast with each other adopting the term generative from mathematics noam chomsky introduced the concept of generative grammar in 1950s and this generative because it generates is also known as transformational grammar because it is generated through the process of transformation now generative grammar is a theory of grammar that holds that human language is shaped by a set of basic principles that are part of human being we have already discussed in one of our earlier videos about language acquisition device which is basically an abstract or uh, we can say device in our brain with which we are born which actually allow us to understand language at quite an early age 
it is distinct from other types of grammatical studies like prescriptive grammar as the name, name indicates it attempts to establish standardized language rules that deem certain uses is right or wrong so it prescribes which are the correct uses and which are the wrong ones so that uh, one should not create wrong grammatical grammatically incorrect sentences prescriptive approach view grammar as a set of rules that decide the correct uses of a language for example in english some of the rules are don't split and infinitives for example don't put any object between to and verb don't end a sentence with a linking verb don't end a sentence with a preposition these are some uh, prescriptions these are some rules um, a person should follow if he or she is writing or reading in uh, speaking in english generative approaches in contrast believes that sentences are generated by a subconscious set of procedures and they are called generative because they allowed us to generate an infinite number of sentences there is a deep structure and out of that deep structure we are able through the process of transformation to create a number of uh, sentences next term is also equally interesting and related and once again given by noam chomsky that is linguistic competence uh, in contrast with linguistic performance he introduced the concept of performance and competence as the foundations for his generative grammar linguistic competence refers to the unconscious knowledge of grammar which allows a speaker to understand the language it is also known as grammatical competence or first language now once again it is uh, like other concept of chomsky it divides uh, the use of language into two parts one is at subconscious level which 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 we which basically allows us to understand or to uh, basically find out the meaning of an utterance competence is thus ability to make use of an internalized grammar which we have right from our birth from our upbringing which enables us to speak and understand an infinite number of potential utterances in contrast to one's linguistic competence the behavior of producing actual utterances is called performance we may have a very good linguistic competence but during uh, but uh, because of many factors our performance may be different from our competence so competence involves knowing the language which is at different level and performance involves doing something with the language let's uh, try to understand this easily uh, in other from some analogy for example a person may have knowledge of all cricketing shots all cricketing type of that on which type of ball which type of shot should be played okay but that is known as his or her competence but when actually coming to play it may depend on so many factor weather condition pitch condition bowling condition wind and so many factors so it can affect the performance still knowing everything it is also to be noted that competence remains unconscious it is abstract it is like a reservoir even when one has linguistic competence it doesn't mean performance is always according to it competence is an idealized concept it, it can never be actualized 100% uh, a slip of tongue it is basically not we are not talking about uh, freudian concept of slip of tongue here we are talking about linguistic concept though we know though we know the correct order of a phrase one performs incorrectly 
uh, while speaking. It may be due, uh, due to stress or maybe some other factor. Sometimes instead of speaking noble tons of soil, and we uh, sorry instead of speaking noble sons of toil we speak noble tons of soil so uh, we are not talking about non native speakers or english as second language even native speakers having full competency can perform in different manner because of uh, many factors with this we and closely related with linguistic concept is the concept of communicative competence and this is different that it is determined by the social context and it basically guide us that how we may socially appropriate speech so linguistic competence it linguistic performance and communicative competence three terms linguistic competence is native speaker's knowledge of his or her language system linguistic performance is speaker's ability to use or understand actual sentence and communicative competence is knowledge of how to use a language in social context which should be deemed appropriate with this we come to our last term of the day hyper correction which is a linguistic situation when rules of grammar and language are misapplied or over applied in zeal to follow the correct uses of the english language so it always happens with non native speakers who want to show themselves to be uh, fully competent in that language and in this enthusiasm in this zeal they basically hyper correct or misapply certain rules it occurs with non native speakers when a speaker over generalizes a phenomena which he or she does not have in their native variety so they basically fail to understand its grammatical implication speaker conscious of social consequences of language you are speaking uh, english in a particular formal uh, setting you are very much aware of the uh, the outcome of your performance they are very then we become very quite careful cautious about our choices and adjust their choices thinking this their language uses wrong we will try to understand uh, hyper correction we must understand that speakers of less prestigious dialect try to imitate a more prestigious one by adaptation in their pronunciation or usage for example look at this particular picture who are coming to the party my friends and i will come here in this particular phrase my friends and i it is in subject position after it comes predicate so here use of i is correct in the second picture did our teacher know the teacher knew only about you and i now here it is after preposition about or and even it is in a prepositional object now when a pronoun is in object position uh, then instead of i we should use me this is an example of hyper correction my friend and i you and i it is hyper correction instead of speaking you and me you and i is followed okay dear friends that was all in our today's lesson i hope i was able to make clear these concepts which are quite important which will increase and enhance your knowledge about linguistics we will soon meet again with new videos on linguistic and other important related topics of net thank you dear friends